an unprecedented price hike in petroleum products as the government has increased the price of petrol by 21 rupees and that of diesel by 27 rupees. This was barely a week after sugar price saw an increase of 20 rupees per kilogram. The back-breaking price hike on essential commodities was widely feared after government opted to reduce imported products despite having a target of increasing revenue collection. Good morning, I'm Sarah Chitrakar and these are the headlines of the hour. The government hikes the prices of petroleum products yet again. Petrol to cost 199 rupees per litre, while diesel will sell at 192 rupees, effective from today. Leaders and influential people making most of customary scholarships to be provided by private schools, targeted students devoid of facility due to lack of monitoring. Less than two months after Emmanuel Macron was re-elected president, he is on course to lose control of the French National Assembly following a strong performance by rival parties. And ANFA General Convention to elect a new leadership taking place today. Karma Chiring, Pankaj Nimwang and Raju Paudel in the fray for top position. The government has yet again hiked the prices of petroleum products. The Nepal Oil Corporation has attributed the drastic price hike to the increase in fuel prices in international market. The state oil monopoly has hiked the price of petrol by 21 rupees per litre and diesel and kerosene by 29 rupees per litre. Petrol will now cost 199 rupees per litre, while the price of diesel and kerosene has reached 192 rupees per litre, effective from today. The corporation had said that a loss of 13.58 rupees per litre of petrol and 13.94 rupees per litre of diesel was incurred after hiking their prices last time around. Meanwhile, the corporation makes a profit of 43.6 rupees per litre of kerosene. The government has refrained from hiking the price of cooking gas this time around. The oil corporation has informed that it still faces a loss of 751.14 rupees per cylinder of cooking gas, which is being sold at 1,800 1, rupees. The corporation further added that the annual loss of the corporation on cooking gas amounts to 2.28 billion rupees. The state oil monopoly, which follows an automated price system, has been hiking the prices of petroleum products, citing price hike in international market. Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Deuba has been alleged of intentionally avoiding the meeting of a parliamentary committee. The Parliament's International Affairs Committee held the lack of response from the Premier as a blatant disregard to the parliamentary body. Earlier, the lawmakers had also flayed the Prime Minister's absence at the House when he was supposed to furnish clarifications on the disputed State Partnership Programme, SPP. There are now growing demands for the government to correspond with the US, citing that Nepal is not a part of SPP. The International Affairs Committee of the Parliament has also demanded all the documents pertaining to the much-debated military programme. The committee members yesterday not only flayed the Prime Minister for his absence, but also declared that Premier's reluctance to attend the meeting was objectionable. It may be recalled that the Prime Minister was also charged of undermining the House when he refrained from attending the session where he was required to furnish clarifications on doubts raised by lawmakers regarding SPP. Home Minister Balkrishna Khard had defended the government on behalf of the Prime Minister who had opted to attend a meeting of the Association of Non-Resident Nepalese the same day. If we look at yesterday's development, it, it was informed that when Premier Deuba was supposed to attend the meeting of the Parliamentary Committee, he rather preferred to entertain coalition leaders Pushpa Kamal Dahal and Madhav Kumar Nepal at his official residence in Balwatar. Political analysts therefore opined that Prime Minister Deuba's continued indifference towards the House and the parliamentary body is a serious devaluation of democratic practices. There is a legal provision that private schools have to provide full scholarships to 15% of the total number of students in the school. However, majority of private schools have neglected the poor, needy and targeted group of students and not provided them scholarships made compulsory by law. 
There are a total of 505 private schools operating within Kathmandu Metropolis. By law, the private schools have to provide full scholarships to 15% of the total number of students who are of the targeted group of poor, needy, handicapped, Dalit and indigenous students. However, the schools have been coming up with various excuses post-COVID-19 pandemic to refrain from providing the scholarships. In practice, the monitoring entity demands applications through the local level to recommend scholarships for the targeted students. However, the Metropolis has not yet done so. Instead, the responsibility to provide the scholarships has been handed to the school itself. Among the 753 local levels in the country, only around 30% of them have issued notices to provide scholarships to the deserving students. Many scholarships provided by the private schools go to the children of political leaders and other influential individuals. There are a total of around 8,000 private schools currently operating in the country. Among them, schools with up to 500 students have to provide scholarships to 10% of their students, while schools with up to 800 students have to give scholarships to 12%, and schools having students above 800 have to hand full scholarships to 15% of their students. In reality, the targeted students have not received scholarships. However, private schools operators have been claiming that scholarships are being handed according to the rules and regulations. There is a general call on the government to inspect these private schools to make sure that deserving students don't fall out of the scholarship scheme. It's time now for our segment, Public Pulse, where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. Here's the question, what's your take on private schools denying to provide compulsory 15% scholarships to poor and needy students? Your options are A, targeted group not in priority, B, lack of monitoring, and C, leaders and influential people having their way. Voting is on, tap any WS, select your option, A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. A team from the Agriculture Ministry has reached India in an effort to speed up the process to bring chemical fertilizers, which the Indian government had assured to Nepal. The Nepali officials taking part in the joint meeting in New Delhi today will request the Indian side for the urgent delivery of the pledged fertilizers to the go-downs of the Agriculture Input Company as it will take around a month and a half to transport the fertilizers according to government procedure the nepali officials are set to request the indian government to speed up the packing and delivery process acting managing director of agriculture inputs company rajendra bahadur karki informed kantipur news that maximum efforts are being made to bring in 150000 tons of fertilizers assured by india by 29th of june Nepal's Agriculture Inputs Company and India's National Chemical Fertilizer will facilitate in implementing the Fertilizer Purchasing Agreement inked between the two countries. The Nepal government has been requesting the Indian government to send chemical fertilizers to Nepal at a time when the country has been facing its acute shortage. In our Public Voice segment, we had asked people in several provinces, why has the internal democracy of political parties weakened? Let's take a look at what they had to say. Public voice. Karikarta, Nita, Jatakhana Pao, Pokhiku Pachari Injun. Pati Vitroko, Koloka Kar. Niti or like Rambus of Karun in Malona Nos of the Heri. Paranitic Doloru, Vitraka Bekti Oru, Oza, Noitic Taritra, but a Tolo Zorera, Jantale Chaika Kuraruko, Vivasta Gorde, Ogadi Bodego Nale, Luk Tantra, Osade Tarapasa. Time now for sports update. Sports news. The General Convention of Football Governing Body and Pa is taking place today as contestants standing for various positions are in a last ditch effort to win the confidence in their favor. The former partners of the yesteryear's incumbent Karma Chiring Sherpa and Pangach Bikram Nimwang are contesting against each other, while Anfa's education and marketing head Rajiv Paudel is another contestant for the top position of the president. The new leadership's first assignment, meanwhile, would be how it will deal with head coach Abdullah Al Muteri's recent controversy. 
The ANFA General Convention will elect a new leadership for the next four years. Incumbent President Karma Chiring and Senior Vice President Pankaj Nemwang had contested the election last time around from the same panel. However, football politics has been such that the two men are not in talking terms these past four years. The friends turned foes rivalry now is personal rather than football development, while Rajiv Paudel's candidacy is against the present leadership. Likewise, Sikshit Parajuli is contesting for the position of senior vice president from Karma's panel, while Bir Bahadur Khadka represents Nim Wang's panel for the position of senior vice president. The general convention will elect a 21-member committee comprising a president, one by senior vice president, three vice presidents, among others. The voting is scheduled to take place from 2 p.m. this afternoon, while the results will be announced by evening today itself, giving Anfa the new leadership. Nepal is taking on Bahrain in the third match under the ACC Women T20 Championship today. The match is at Kinrara Oval Stadium is scheduled to kick off in a short while away from now. Nepal has remained undefeated in the tournament so far, collecting two wins in as many matches. Nepal registered a 25-run victory against Kuwait before defeating Bhutan by 50 runs. Nepali Eves are gunning for their third straight win of the tournament. If this happens, Nepal will confirm a place in the semi-finals with a game left. Bahrain is yet to win a match in the tournament while its match against Kuwait was washed out. There are 10 teams in the tournament while two finalists will qualify for the Asia Cup. Meanwhile, a latest report states that the start of the match between Nepal and Bahrain has been delayed due to bad weather. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Good day.